Today we've got the 2018 Dodge Charger Daytona 392. It's a 485 horsepower four-door that runs a 12 second quarter mile and costs around $50,000. Does a car like this even have any competitors? Let's take it out and see. This, the Daytona 392, has retro, big, thick stripes on the back and a hood scoop with the blackout and the Hemi across the front. Certainly no one will be wondering what's under the hood or what kind of car you're driving. There are a ton of different color combinations, including this Destroyer Gray, which is really a love it or hate it color. I have stolen the Charger from the Edmonds offices and I am running for Mexico right now, never to return it because I am not in agreement with the rest of the Edmonds staff about this car. I mean, we agree about some things. We all think that the engine in the Charger is fantastic. I mean, 485 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque. Nobody's gonna argue against that. And we agree that the interior is maybe not spectacular. There's a lot of plastic, it's kind of rubbery. So we're in agreement about those things, but overall, they think there are other cars that would be better to own than this car. BMW 3 Series and the Audi S4 and those are smaller cars, but they're in about the same price range and about the same performance. But nobody's gonna be that comfortable in the back seat of those cars. So they're already pretty different. It's actually kind of hard to think of a competitor for this exact Charger. Dodge has so many model versions of the Charger, I think it's nine or 10 different, different things that you can get, that if you like the Charger at all, you're gonna be able to find a specific Charger that you really like. The question is, which one is it, and how do you pick a competitor for a car that there are so many versions of? In particular, how do you pick a competitor for this version of the Charger, which is very specific? This car, the Charger Daytona 392, is about three down from the Hellcat. So it's the best engine you can get before you get the supercharger. So again, 485 horsepower. The only car that we could agree on back at the office that we thought really was kind of a, a true competitor for this car, kind of doing the same thing, having this great performance, having a lot of room, being comfortable, four doors, was the Kia Stinger. Well, there's a sentence I never thought I'd be saying, hey, let's compare a Dodge and a Kia. But they really do sort of add up. They have about the same quarter mile time. They both seat four, they've got four doors. Since the performance and price are comparable, the main difference is whether you like that slightly more technologically advanced Turbo 6 to get your power down, or you like the naturally aspirated V8 Hemi. <laughs> uh, Hemi. So it's not just a number when you talk about the horsepower and the torque in the 6.4 Hemi. It's really this effortless application of power. Uh, it's just hugely entertaining and it gives you such a sense of confidence when you're driving. I mean, there just isn't anything that you can't pass. And if you haven't ever driven a car that, that has a lot of horsepower and that has a good response like this, I really recommend you do a test drive because you might think that you're not interested in having a fast car, but once you drive one, you might feel differently. The Hemi is backed by Chrysler's eight-speed automatic transmission. There's no manual option in Charger, not anywhere, not in Hellcat, not all the way down in the six, just the automatic, but it's a really good transmission. You're not gonna have any complaints about it. The Charger Daytona 392 has two different modes, the sport mode and the normal driving mode, and then you can adjust different things within those modes. So you can have the steering set in sport if you want a little bit more weight to it. The normal driving mode and the normal weighted steering is just fine for regular street driving. One thing that I will complain about in this car is that the throttle application, the, the gas pedal and the brake pressure are not very well balanced. The throttle is pretty jumpy. I mean, it will move you forward very quickly. So that's something that you need to get used to. You have to be very gentle with the initial application. And the brakes are sort of the opposite. They're really good. Um, this car had a great stopping distance at our test track, but they don't feel really good. They feel very soft. They don't have like an immediate bite and, um, and they're always sort of squishy. Like I can press on it right now and the pedal moves, which is a little bit unnerving, even though they absolutely stop you. Inside the Charger is extremely comfortable and not very pretty. I'm sorry, it's true. It's just a lot of plastic. If you're feeling generous, you could say that it's sort of a retro throwback to the 60s Chargers. The Daytona has specific details like the seats and the door panels that are just for this trim model. 
and they're very pretty, but it's kind of funny because it's just like, oh, look at this really nice insert with its contrast stitching and that. Not so good. This is something where you really have to look at which car you're buying and how much it is because if you are considering the Kia Stinger to be a competition to this car, the Kia Stinger interior is just much nicer all around. The materials are nicer, the fit and finish is nicer. Uh, some of the folks at the office felt like it was even more comfortable, which is amazing because this is very comfortable. And it's just a more sophisticated interior altogether. It's more modern. While the interior might not be anything to write a letter home about, Dodge's infotainment system is incredibly easy to use and very responsive. They call it Uconnect. So you can get a seven inch touchscreen or this is the bigger 8.4 inch touchscreen which has a different surround. One thing that's sort of nice about an interior that hasn't changed a huge amount in the last few years is that everything is where you expect it to be. They didn't try to redesign everything. So it has actual volume buttons and tuning and the climate control. Everything is tactile. You can find it while you're driving and you don't have to use any sort of weird mouse pad or joystick or anything. You can customize the car to turn stuff on for you when you auto start it. If you live somewhere really cold or really hot, you get into the car and the air conditioning is already on and it's delightful. The dashboard is what now might be considered old fashioned. I mean, it's actual physical gauges with like an actual needle that moves. It's not digital stuff. There is a center section that's digital and you can adjust that to show fuel economy or a trip meter uh, or whatever song is playing on the radio. Depending on which radio you get, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are available. Not only is there a ton of room in the charger for the passengers, both in the front and in the back, I know I've said that this car is comfortable like 27 times, but it really is comfortable. Like even when we were filming this, one of the video guys got in the back and he's like, oh dang, this car is comfortable. There's also a fair amount of room for, for stuff. There's nice big cup holders. There's, uh, there's a sort of shelf in the door panel. There's little non-slip trays so you can have a phone sitting here and it's not going to be sliding around. Cup holders, a fairly deep console with a removable tray and uh, USB ports, auxiliary, and two different 12 volts. That's in the front. There's also additional USBs and 12 volts in the back. Everything that's nice in the front is also nice in the back. In fact, I almost think that the back seat is nicer than the front in terms of aesthetics. I have this seat as far back as it'll go. So far back that I can't even reach the pedals if I was sitting in it, and I still have leg room. There is no reason you'd be uncomfortable in a long road trip in this car. I was lucky enough to have this car over a weekend and it went on a pretty solid road trip. It did almost 500 miles, had the dogs, had my husband, we were going to a lake, so we had all the stuff that you need for a weekend of boating. So it was like, car was all full of floaties and coolers and all of that stuff. And it was great, it was so comfortable. We didn't have any problem fitting everything in it and then going sort of back and forth between our campsite and the lake wasn't a problem even once we had two more people with us. The cabin noise in the charger is minimal and it doesn't really matter anyway because the whole point of this car is so that you can hear that exhaust note. <laughs> oh yeah. One thing that always comes up when you talk about Dodge Charger and Dodge Challenger is, oh sure, it's good in a straight line, but it can't go around corners. Well, I'm on a curvy mountain road right now and I haven't driven off the side yet, so clearly it can go around corners. Yes, this is a heavy car and yes, you can feel it. The brakes are excellent, the steering is responsive and it's very consistent, so it's not a problem. The thing that I really like about this car is it's so usable. I mean, it's a really practical choice and then it's also super fast. At the test track, our test team ran a 12 six quarter mile with this car, which is really fast. If you're into drag racing and you like to go to the track and participate, that's so quick that you have to wear a helmet. They have rules about when you need to start wearing a helmet. With that in mind, I figured, you know, all of this driving around town and road trip stuff is great. It's really useful information, but we ought to do what Dodge designed this car for. We've already seen that the Charger makes an excellent daily driver comfortable, it's easy, and it's fast. But there's one thing that Dodgers are really known for these days. And while the 392 might not be able to hang with those demons in the background, we want to go drag racing. My nose is itchy in my helmet. It's difficult. You know, Dodge has made a big deal about drag strip runs. And 
Obviously, this isn't the demon. This isn't the top of the line Dodge drag racer, but it's a, a really fun car to take the strip. And Dodge's marketing saying, hey, go drive this car at a drag strip seems to be working because there are a lot more uh, Dodges out here running than there are, say, contemporary Camaros or Mustangs. You know, that's not to say that those cars can't do this. It's just that the owners of the Charger and the Challenger have really been encouraged to come do it, and, and it's working. So I'm actually pretty proud of Dodge for that. I mean, it's cool. It, it's important to support your local racetracks, and it is hugely fun. It's so much fun. It's so cheap. You, you got to just go and do it. There's no reason not to. Most of these cars will roll through the water box and then they'll do a big smoky burnout. That is one of the most fun parts about drag racing, but we're not doing it because we have just regular treaded street tires and all that happens is you pick up a whole bunch of water in the tread of your tires. Traction control's off, we're in sport. Drag run, friends. I think we just beat a faster car. It's hot in here. You're not allowed to run the air conditioning because it drops water on the track. It's funny to come down here. You can hear people talking about the car. You go, babe. Thank you. The car that we just raced, you know, sounded really aggressive, looked really aggressive, and it ran an 866 at 82 miles an hour, and we ran an 847 at 86 miles an hour. So. You know, that's not even a stock car. That's a car that somebody did work to to make it faster. And this thing, str like, straight off of the freeway and being hot lapped is quicker than it. And I'm not dissing. It's just unbelievably awesome that you can go buy a car for 50 grand and come to the drag strip and be competitive. That said, I don't want to line up against one of those demons. I am lining up at the 8th Mile Drags against a Dodge Demon. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. This car is quick. I beat every car that I raced tonight at Irwindale. I'm not gonna beat that guy, but I'm definitely gonna try. <laughs> oh my god, it's so fast! <laughs> Bye! Bye, Ron! Alright, well, that is the difference between 480 horsepower and 840 horsepower. But this car's cheaper. His car's a lot more work as a daily driver. The 2018 Charger 392 is the cowboy boot of cars. It's not the most sophisticated or the most elegant option, but it's comfy and bold and it'll work in any situation. If I was looking for a four-door family fun car, I would definitely take a look at the Charger. If you want to find out more about the 2018 Charger Daytona 392 and all of its variants, look for our review at Edmunds. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.